Hi, I'm Ellen. I'm a Barnard student. I study environmental sustainability. I've been here working this summer on Course Woody Debris. And Course Woody Debris is basically big pieces of dead wood that are strewn about the forest. Sometimes they're on the forest floor, sometimes they're still kind of standing up or leaning. And Course Woody Debris is really important because it stores carbon um, for, in some cases, a really long time. And that's what I've been working on. But um, also it's important for a lot of other reasons, like wildlife habitats. Like you can tell an animal has been here because like it's a, that's definitely an animal. Of course, woody debris is important for erosion prevention, carbon storage, and it's a great habitat for animals and for promoting diversity in the animal population. Okay, coarse woody debris is at least 1.5 meters in length and has at least a diameter of 10 centimeters um, at its largest end. So there are five decay classes for coarse woody debris. Five is the most decayed. Uh, you can tell that it's a five decay class because the wood is usually spongy, doesn't have its shape. It, there's no bark around. It basically looks like a pile of mulch or compost. And um, in the middle decay class uh, classes, three predominantly two and four, the wood is much harder. You can knock on it and you can tell that it's solid through. And then another way of testing is with a nail, to push a nail in. And if it meets a lot of resistance, you know it's a three. And then decay class one is basically just died this season or last season. It still has its bark. It looks like a living tree. It has uh, fine branches. It's a huge giveaway for uh, decay class one. So this is an example of a decay class one coarse woody debris tree specimen. And we know it's decay class one. The dead giveaway is that it still has fine branches on it and even some leaves, which means it probably died this year, which is recent. And also it has bark still on it, uh, almost completely on it. And that's how you know it's a one. Mm -hmm. So this log right here, in this spot right here is a really good example of a decay class three piece of coarse woody debris. Um, you can tell that it's decay class three because it doesn't have any bark on its body. Sometimes there's bark that's lying around that can be helpful, but there isn't any here. Also, you know it's a three because it's pretty solid when you knock on it. We use a nail sometimes to push in, and if it is, meets resistance, you know it's a three. And those are the two big giveaways for three and then four is a good example right here you can even tell by the sound of it that it isn't hollow I mean it isn't solid and you can also tell that it's a four because it's not circular and it's kind of falling apart but it's not a five because it's not smushy and when I stand on it it holds me like <laughs> holds the shape so this piece here is a great example of a decay class five coarse woody debris specimen. And you can tell that it's a decay class five because it's in pieces and it doesn't hold its shape as a whole unit. You can tell that it's not circular here. You couldn't measure a diameter if you wanted to. It's pretty flat, in fact. And another interesting thing about decay class five coarse woody debris is that it's home to lots of creatures like these worms which are really important for soil creation. Oops, there's another cool thing here, the beetle. Wow. They don't like light. That's why it likes it there. I don't really know what it is, but it's cool. I have these in my house. So another really important thing about Decay class 5 coarse woody debris is that it serves as a seed bed for other trees that are just coming up. So if you can see right here, where my finger is, is a tiny birch sapling. And it is definitely from this year. You can tell by how little it is. And the coarse woody debris supplies its nutrients with the help of the beetles and the worms, obviously. Worms are really important for that. So the first thing I do when I find a piece of coarse woody debris is I measure how long it is and I do it with this meter tape. It has centimeters on it. 
So I would go down to the end of this uh, branch here. meters long and you do it to the tenth of a meter to centimeter. So next we leave the meter tape up for the length and then we use our calipers which measure, measure diameter and are in centimeters units to measure the diameter of the long end above the bowl. So here it's 29.5 we measure it to the half. And in the middle, this tree was 14 something, so measure at 17.1 is here. And this is 19.4. And this is small end. And it's kind of wonky shaped, so you have to do this. So like here we see at its smallest small it's about six, but then if you take it this way, it's about nine and a half. So like kind of in between that, like seven, seven-ish. Call it seven. Okay. Course sorting debris come in two categories based on the angle that they are leaning or have fallen to. And the first category that we can identify is a snag. And the snag is 45 degrees to the ground or greater, stopping at 90. And this is a good example of a snag because it's standing up straight, which is really cool. It's 90 degrees. And a log, on the other hand, is a flat 180. It's less than 45 degrees to the ground. So the last thing we usually do with a piece of coarse woody debris is we identify what species it was when it was living. This one here is really awesome to identify because it has a living tree next to it and it's coming from the same bowl so you know that it's the same species. And this piece of coarse woody debris is maple. You can tell by its bark. It's thin. It's kind of papery, not like a birch, but thin. And it's a snag, which is fun because it means you gotta use this to measure the height instead of a tape measure. So you just go like this, you hook it on the top and make sure it touches the bottom so you have the whole length. And that's how you measure the length of a snag. And then, for a snag, assuming that the specimen is a cylinder, which it is, you only have to take one measurement. I take it at DBH just because that's sort of convention for allometric equations. Doesn't really matter, as long as it's by the root bowl. This one is 14 centimeters. And you can use that measurement here of diameter for your large end and your small end also because it's a cylinder. That's a really key point. If it's not a cylinder, you can't assume that the diameter in one place is the diameter everywhere. So this forest is really important because it's oak dominated and oaks are really important in coarse woody debris for carbon sequestration, which means that basically a dead piece of oak can hold carbon for a really, really long time. And this is really cool in our research. We see it in the fact that oaks have a decay class of three for a really long time. So now we know what coarse woody debris is, how you measure it, how you classify it, and why it's really important for carbon sequestration.